Austin from My Tennis HQ, and today I'm going to be doing a video on how to string a racket on the Alpha Stringer. It's about 20 years old, but it works really well. Um, this video is going to be a step-by-step -step walkthrough, so if you have your machine and your racket ready, you're going to be able to follow along perfectly with me, and uh, should, be, should be good to go. I should be able to walk you through every step so that you can do this on your own. Um, so the first step, obviously, is you've broken a string or you need a racket that needs to be restrung. You're going to cut the, the old strings out. So I've got my pair of wire cutters here that works perfect for this. And we're just going to cut out every string right down the middle. So you'll do the crosses or the mains. And then do the other side. something that looks like this. We're going to separate the strings, each of those four parts there. There we go. Now the strings are loose in there and you're just going to push them out. Just get them out of there. Like that. Sometimes with the last ones with the knots, you're going to have to just look and see how you can get it out. Uh, some string patterns are a little funny, so you might actually have to go in and cut the actual knot with your wire cutters. Um, for this racket, I don't have to. I can just kind of uh, pull the strings out one by one there and pull that knot. Like this one, just go in there, make a little cut, and we're good. All right. Now you've got the strings out of your racket, ready to go. You are going to measure out your string that you need for the racket. So uh, strings come in two ways. It comes in a set or a reel. A reel has a lot more, and a set has just enough string for one racket. Um, so if you have a set, you're going to take the string out and just cut that in half. It'll be 40 feet, so 20 feet for both. Because you have the reel, you're going to have to measure out about 20 feet for both the cross and the main strings. So I've measured my own body to the perfect amount. I know that one, two, three, and a little bit extra is going to be enough for the crosses and the mains. So you'll cut that portion out. Set it to the side, do it one more time. One, two, three, and a little extra. So because my wingspan, I'm a big guy, is six feet, a little over six feet, I do three, so that's 18 plus a little bit. That'll give you 20 per side. So now you're good to go. You've got the string measured, ready to go for your racket for the crosses and the mains. Okay. So now that you have your racket, the strings cut out, um, you've got your machine turned on. You're gonna, the first thing you're going to do is uh, make sure that the tension is correct for what you want it. So this is at 50. I want to crank that up to 56. Perfect. Okay. Then you're going to mount the racket. Um, this is really important because if you do it poorly, uh, you can really damage the frame because as you're pulling the tension with the strings as you go on, if the frame's loose in here, then um, the racket will get pulled in directions that you don't want it to be pulled. So it's, it, that's no good. So what you're going to do is you're going to set your racket in here. Uh, this machine is a six point mounting uh, machine, which is really good. It, it, it means the, the racket really isn't going to go anywhere if you do this right. So. We're going to twist these. The first one you're going to do is these uh, at 12 and 6. Every, every machine's a little different. 
With these, you're going to twist these knobs here on the top and on the bottom. They both have knobs. So make sure your racket is aligned in the middle of the main strings on the front and top. And you're going to twist right, righty tighty on both evenly. And again, you don't, because when you twist the mounts come out on the racket this way, you don't want to overdo it to where the frame is stretching, but you want to do it where the frame is not going to go anywhere. Okay, so that's good. Not too much pressure, but it's not going to move. Next, you're going to do the four uh, mounts on the side. So, as we twist these knobs up here and here, these mounts come in towards the frame. And we're going to twist up until they meet and secure the racket, but again, you don't want to over twist to make the, the racket come in on itself because that's, uh, that's counterproductive. You're going to damage your frame. So we're going to do the same on the top and bottom. Just twist real gently. Boom. And you should be good to go. Racket's not going anywhere. That's really important. So that's the first step. Okay. Now we're ready to get stringing. So you've got your main string here. You need to analyze the racket and see where to start. So if in the throat you have eight holes for the strings to go through, that means you're going to start at the top. You're going to put the first two strings through the top and go through. If there's six, you're going to start at the bottom and go up through the top. That's just how the racket's made. If you need uh, tips on your specific racket, Tennis Warehouse has really good guides and detail that show the specs of the racket and how to string them really. Um, so the string pattern, uh, which holes you're going to end up needing to skip, things like that. So if you're unsure, always check it out because you don't want to start a racket the wrong way because if you do that, you're just going to have to go back and fix it and it'll be a real, real pain. Okay, so this racket, we're going to start at the top because there's eight holes here. So we're going to thread both strings in at once send them down and thread them through. Now notice these strings aren't crossing each other. That's important, obviously. And we're just going to thread it through here. Make sure this extra access string isn't getting kinked up. So you use your other hand here to make sure it goes through smoothly and boom, it's all the way through nice and tight. And you'll notice that as I did it, I did it evenly. So both sides of the string are completely even. That means that as you go, you're not going to end up with too much on one side and you're going to end up short on the other. So we're going to um, pull this real tight, these two strings, and what you're going to do is you're going to clamp one of the strings. So every clamp is a little different, but you are going to use this one lever, lever here to grab it, grab that string, and the other one to keep it from moving up and down. Then what you're going to do is thread the side of the loose string. You're going to thread one more up to the top. And pull. Perfect. So you're going to clamp that string that you just pulled the same way that you did the other one. So you're going to clamp that one just the same with the two levers. And now you can release by hitting that same button that pulled the string. OK. So what you're going to do is now you're going to pull the string that you haven't pulled yet. The, so we've pulled these two. These two are tight. And then this first one here is still loose, you see? So we're going to pull that to the proper tension and pull. Good. And then you're going to move your clamp down that string. And clamp. All right. Now you're ready to go. So. Now you can start um, 
straining the racket, going through all the mains. Again, it's really important to make sure that you know the racket that you're stringing. So this specific racket, the Babolat Strike, is a 1619. So that means there's going to be 16 mains and 19 crosses. So make sure before you, tie, you end up tying your knots that you have the 16 mains in the proper position. Because once you tie the knots, there's really no going back. So we're going to go through, up, threading the string through the holes that are even with each other. And now it's all about repetition. So we're going to wrap the string around like we did before, through the metal part, and click. So now you'll notice that this string is tight, so we have to clamp that one down. Move it up as close to the frame as you can. The closer you can get it to the frame, the less tension you're going to lose. Now that this string is clamped, you're going to be able to release that, and this string keeps its tension. And we're going to keep going all the way down the racket. So that's four strings, we need 16. Through, pull, and clamp. Great. Again, the biggest mistake that new stringers make is they release that tension before that string is clamped. So you should never release the tension from the stringer unless you make sure that your string is clamped and it's going to hold that tension. If you release this one too early before it's clamped, the whole set of mains is going to lose its tension and it's going to be no good. You're going to have to start over. So when in doubt, don't press this button until you know that the last string is clamped. And we're going to thread it through and now that this is pulled, we release, move this clamp up, clamp, clamp, release. Another important thing for the mains is you want to alternate the sides. So obviously we start from the middle. You don't want to do the whole right side and then the whole left side because as you pull here, if you do it all at once, it's going to damage the frame. So you want to, some people say to alternate every other string. I do a few at once and then change over to the other side. Um, I think with a, with a six point mounting machine, the racket's pretty safe. It's pretty secure. So um, it doesn't matter too much, but just to be safe, can't hurt. that. Remember, as close to the frame, we're going to clamp as close to the frame as possible. And thread up. Pull. And clamp. It's pretty repetitive until you get to about six or seven strings out. Pull. And also remember, as you're pulling your string with the tension, you want to make sure there's no loose string out here because you're just going to pull nothing. You want to make sure that you pull it as much as you can so that the stringer can accurately pull the proper tension that you want. Release, move it down, clamp, clamp, and release. Switch sides here so it's nice and even. Pull. I'm going to start going a little bit faster because that's the basics of it, but if it's your first time stringing, make sure you take it slow. Um, there's nothing worse than trying to rush, 
realizing you made a mistake that you can't change and you have to start all over. So make sure you get the basics down and then once you get a little bit more comfortable you can speed it up. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit trickier, and this is where you need to be conscious of the racket that you're stringing. Um, there are certain holes that are meant for the crosses, certain holes that are set for the mains, and you need to be aware of which holes those are. So on this particular racket, after I pull the tension on this hole, the one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh string, I'm gonna clamp that. I'm going to be aware that this next hole here is meant for a cross. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to skip that one. So see here how I skipped a hole completely and I skip a hole on the top of the racket completely as well because this hole here is for a cross string. We're going to need that. That's really, really important because if you thread your main string through that, the string pattern is going to be messed up and you might not even be able to complete the racket. Uh, I've been there a few times and it's not fun, so uh, make, make sure you're paying attention to that. Again, Tennis Warehouse has really, really good uh, reviews on how to string each racket and which holes the string belongs in. So if you're in doubt, make sure you do that right. And we're going to pull that and clamp. Okay, so that's the eighth string on the left side of the racket. So we're going to leave that there and go to the other side. Do the same thing on this side. Clamp, clamp. Okay, same thing on this side. You're going to skip the cross string and thread through the main string. Skip the cross string, thread through the main string. And pull. Clamp, clamp. Okay, so now we've got all 16 main strings ready to go. Um, the tension's being held by these two clamps. That's really important until you tie your knot. You need to make sure that the clamp is holding the string. If I was to release this clamp, all the tension would be lost and you would have to start over, which I've done it before, it's not fun. Um, so in order to tie a knot, you need to tie, because these are the main strings, you need to tie onto another main string. So every racket is a little different for where those holes are. Um, mine is pretty clear that I'm going to tie this knot on this string here, the seventh over, on both sides. So you're going to thread this little extra end of what you have through the top and pull. Give it, some, give it a little bit of tension. So see how this is going now down through and there's two parts of string going through one hole. And now you're going to tie your knot. Now you're going to tie your knot. So this string, the excess string, is on top of here. You're going to go down and see how I've created this loop. We're going to go up around the existing main string and through that hole. So we make ourselves a knot.
Now, this is important. Um, you want to make sure your knot's tight. So we have some tools here to help you pull it. Um, you can pretty much use anything that's going to work for you. You can even use your hand. What I like to do is I like to let the stringer work for me. So just kind of put it in there and pull. Boom. There's your knot. You always want to double knot. Make sure there's no tension lost. So do the same thing. Down and up, around and through the loop. Boom. So now you're good. There's going to be no tension lost here because this knot is holding it in place. So you're going to go cut that excess string off and boom. You're safe to take this clamp, this right clamp, down because the knot's holding the tension. We're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So we're going to tie the knot on the same seventh string over from the left through that knot hole. Tension down up around that string and through that loop and pull. Same thing again, you always want to double knot down, up, through that loop and pull. There we go. Cut that string off and release the clamp. We now have our mains. All right. So you're going to get the other end of your string, and we're going to do the cross strings now. This is where it gets really tedious, and honestly, a lot of new stringers end up stopping here because it takes a lot of time and a lot of practice to get fairly quick. Um, but the more practice you put in, it really becomes worth it to be able to know how to string a racket and fairly efficiently. So the first thing you're going to do is analyze the racket and see where you need to start with the first string. So remember, because I, sh I skipped these two cross holes up at the top, uh, that's where I'm going to be starting. So I'm going to... You have to avoid this... Uh, sometimes the, the hole is going to be covered by the main string. You just have to kind of get it through there and pull. Starting a racket, there's a few, few ways that you can do it, but you're going to get, you're going to weave that first cross string through. And again, I'm making it look easy because I've strung a lot of rackets, but it could take some time, but make sure you've done that right. And through the other side on the corresponding cross string hole. There's your first cross string. Obviously, no tension yet. This is really important. So there's two ways to start a racket. Um, obviously because there's two loose ends with no knot, if I was to pull this string with the tension, it would just slip right through like this, right? So there needs to be either a clamp or a starter knot. I like using the starter knot because it's easier and I can just let the string work for me. So I'll show you how to do, I'll show you how to do both. Um, so I'll, because I pulled that out, I'm just weaving again, weaving again through there. Oops. A little tip when you string, you want to cut the string at a little diagonal so it's pointy and it just slides right through the holes nice and easy. Okay, so the first way that you can start a racket is if you have one of these um, hand clamps, you can, you can get these on Tennis Warehouse or a lot of the stringing machines that you buy actually come with a tool set um, that include uh, awes and wire cutters and that, all that. So what you'll do is you'll find the short end of your cross strings and you're going to clamp that on the outside of the racket so that when you pull the string, this will stop it and this will be tight and then you'll clamp with your stringing clamp there and you'll keep going and then you tie this knot later. What I'm going to show you guys how to do is a starter knot. So you're going to find the other hole that allows for a knot to come through. Uh, that means there has to be space for two strings to go through one hole. So mine is here where the main string comes through. See how I just slide that through there? 
Boom. Now, a regular knot will not work in this, or, or else I would just go, you know, like I, I did on the mains, over, under, and up. That won't work because as we're actually pulling tension on this string, that basic knot will just slip through. We don't want that. So well, I'm going to show you how to do a basic starter knot. So we come and we go under and over once, under and over, one more time. Just trying to make sure my hands aren't in the way here. Around your, so see how we've got two loops here? And then this string's gonna come around the entire string and through these two loops. See that? So you're gonna end up with something like this. Um, that's a starter knot or a pull knot. So now see, if you'll see this knot is still really loose, but as I pull the other end of this string, that knot is gonna naturally tighten and it's gonna be all good. We're gonna be good to go. So as I pull the other end at 56 pounds, like I have it set at, get in there and show. See how that tightens up just like that. So this string has tension. It's getting held by the knot instead of a clamp. Remember, before you release your tension, you're gonna have to clamp. Clamp, clamp, and then you can release and you're good to go. You cut this extra excess string off and now you're off to the races. Remember, obviously, a racket is strong being weave, woven uh, over, under, over, under. So make sure that you have the correct pattern down as you go because it's really frustrating if you get all the way down here to your 10th, 15th string and you realize that you made a mistake. There's no other way besides just going back and redoing it. Um, so that's really important as you're going, especially when you're a beginner stringing. You need to make sure that you're doing it properly every time. Um, so we're going to go into the next cross string. So you'll see here that the string above, the string is over the main. So on this one, I'm actually gonna be over the main, so the following second string is under. See that? So that'll match up, it alternates every time. And so the next is over, under, over, under, just like that. Through the corresponding grommet, now, as you're pulling the cross strings, the technique here is you don't want to just yank, yank, yank on this because the string will actually eat itself. Uh, all right, so we're going to keep going. Remember pulling with the right hand and reducing the friction with the other hand, making sure that this doesn't kink and you pull it flush to the grommet and 
straighten the string, reset the clamp, and release. So it's a lot of the same. It's just redoing that every, every string down until the very end. So we're going to go through there. Now, a lot of, uh, everyone kind of has a little bit of a different technique when they're stringing. Some people use their index fingers like me. Some people use a thumb. Um, it doesn't really matter, whatever you're comfortable with. But uh, if you are beginning, just stick to something and get good at it. And with time and with practice, it'll get quick. Just don't quit. Don't quit on it because it does get better and it's a really good skill to have in your back pocket. Alright, moving along, through and over. And you want to make sure that clamp, the main strings are fitting in between the teeth of that clamp nicely. A few tips to make this go faster. You want to, as you're getting this string, you want to get to the very end. So all the loose string is here on the side so that it's easy to work with. So you work it through the hole, pull a little bit, pull just enough to, or a little more just to get through the next hole and weave with that. Because if you pull it all the way through, you're going to have all this loose string in here and it's just going to get tangled up. It's just going to make your job harder. It's not that you'll mess up the racket necessarily, but you just want to make this part as simple as you can. Because at the end of the day, if you're stringing, you don't want to spend, you want to spend the least amount of time possible doing it. Efficiency is the key. All right. Kind of say it like as a beginner, like how long it would kind of okay. take, probably. Yeah. I'll, I'll add so, this part out. Uh, when I started stringing, I was 15 and it took me a while to string that first racket, maybe a couple hours. Um, and it's a real pain. It, it came, off the, came off the machine not exactly how I wanted it. It took two hours. It was really frustrating. But, you know, as you get better and, and faster, learn the ins and outs, learn what works for you. Um, you can get it down to a little over 10 minutes, really. I can strain like, you know, around 15 minutes, and it's, it's a really good skill to have. So we're weaving, weaving. But the main thing is when you're learning, you want to make sure you get all the basics down. Uh, that's the most important thing. To me, it doesn't really matter if it takes uh, an hour, two hours, 15 minutes. If the racket's not coming off the machine how I want it, then it's no good any anyways. You want to make sure that it comes off at the proper tension and all the strings are in place and all that. So. Okay, so because I started with my starter knot up here, uh, it meant that I can just keep going all the way through and finish the racket. But if you did end up starting with this clamp up on the top, obviously you don't want to get all the way down and forget about it. So um, what you would do is you would have this clamp holding the tension. If this slips, it's no good. You lose all the tension from all these strings. So what you would do is you would take one of the, cl the clamp that's on this side, if the, if the hand clamp's here, you would take this clamp, put it up flush next to the racket so that this clamp takes the tension over. And once this clamp is secure on this string, you would take that off. Now you'll have a little bit of loose string here and you would tie onto wherever you need. Tie the knot. Now the knot's holding the tension and you can move the clamp back to where it was before. So you can do it either way. There, it really doesn't make a difference as far as the racket's concerned. 
Um, I find the starter knot a little bit easier just because less tools involved and um, you can just really go on and not worry about it and not have to, to backtrack, but um, you, can, you can do it however you prefer. I also recommend for beginners uh, finding a racket that you can work on, unless it's your own, um, that has a more open string pattern. So, you know, if you're stringing in 1820, uh, the holes, the, the strings are going to be closer together and it's just going to be, it's just going to make it tougher to weave. Um, as, as you're beginning, it, it's better to find a more open string pattern so that there's more room uh, to kind of get the feel for it. And I also recommend uh, practicing with a string that is a little bit looser, not as stiff. So, obviously, I'm stringing here with a Selenko Confidential polyester string. It's a little stiffer. Um, find a cheap uh, synthetic gut or something and work with that. Even if it's not something that you typically use, for the sake of practicing, it's, it's really nice to just be able to weave through that a little bit quicker and it's a little bit softer on your fingers just to get the hang of it. Okay, so we're getting down to the very end of the racket here. We've got, let's see, like six or seven more strings to go. This is where everything starts to come together. And this is also where sometimes if you weren't careful and you didn't make sure that the main strings were in the proper grommets, you're going to catch your mistake and it's going to be too late. You're going to, it's almost not even going to be worth going back. You're going to want to uh, cut the strings out and start over, which Again, I've been there, it's not fun, but it's just something you have to do. If you did the main strings properly, the cross strings, it, it should be pretty uh, self-explanatory where the cross strings go. It's, it's obviously, you're not going to have any open holes in the racket. So you're just filling the ones that are, that are open. Some rackets uh, have some funky string patterns. So if you're unsure, again, just go on Tennis Warehouse um, and check out the, the details of the racket that you're stringing and go from there. Some are, some are really funny, like there's rackets with shared holes, so there's some that have uh, where the, the string threads through the main, the main and the cross string uh, share the same hole. Things like that that you can't, it's, it's hard to look at a racket and be able to tell on your own. So. Go check it out before you before you make the mistake and it's too late. As you get to the bottom of the racket, it is going to be a bit tougher to thread the string through the mains because there's less wiggle room on these on these mains. So um, that is why I recommend starting with a uh, synthetic gut or something like that. Okay. Obviously avoiding our mounting points, making sure the string doesn't go around the mounting point because you don't want to pull a string around that and all of a sudden you can't get your racket off the, off the stringing machine when you're done. You'll notice before I pull the string, I actually straighten it a little bit. Um, that just makes it a little bit easier for me to straighten the strings when I'm done, and uh, it makes the tension just a little bit more accurate. If I have the string going all the way down here and I pull it, it's going to be a little bit looser. This is the last one. Two more. 
All right, so two more strings. Be conscious. This is where most mistakes happen um, as far as if you start over or under the first, or the first main string because you have to be careful when you start if, for example, on this last one on this racket, we see that this one, as the holes here inside of the outside main string, I was used to going over on the first one through all of these, but on this one I'm actually going to do the first under. Again, you can just check the string above it and make sure it's the opposite. So in my clamp you can see that this string here is above the, ma above the main string, so I'm going to do the first one under on this one. Again, the last one is a little more awkward just because not as much room to work with. All right. Up. Through that last hole. Pull. Okay, now remember the same thing as the mains, we're going to tie this knot, so you have to clamp to hold the tension. Very, very, very important. So that tension is being held, we can release, and we've got this string to tie our final knot. So you can choose, sometimes there's a few knot holes, I'm going to use this one here. Use the tools that came with your stringer to help you out. Do this one very slow. So, wait, what? Do it very slowly. Okay. Okay, so I've threaded, this is our last string, I've threaded through that knot hole. So, the string is on the inside of the racket. And we're going to pull that so that there's no loop on the outside. We're going to pull tight. And because the string is on top, we're going to go through and down around that string that you're tying the knot and through that loop there. We're going to catch that and through. Tie the knot. And one more time. Always double knot. Less tension will leak through. And pull. Now you've got your knot tied, you don't need the clamps anymore. So release, release, cut that excess string off. And you're gonna unmount the racket just like you, the opposite of how you mounted it. So we're gonna take these, we're going to loosen these like that so the racket can come off. Loosen those and loosen at 12 and 6. There we go. We're good to go. Ready to use. Alright guys, I hope that video was helpful. Uh, hopefully you were able to follow along and string a racket of your own. Um, if you like that video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit MyTennisHQ.com. If you need any recommendations on stringing machines, we've listed a few uh, recommended ones that I've used before in the description below. And if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. Thanks guys.